Hello everyone, thank you for joining my YouTube channel. My name is Olu Adini and I'm here to talk about another very interesting part of a research proposal. Um, I would like to remind you to please subscribe to this channel and follow me on my Twitter handle. In today's video, I will talk about two very interesting components of a research proposal. I will talk about the research topic and the research abstract. Now, in my previous video, I tried to explain in details what a research proposal entails. And in discussing all of this about uh, a research proposal, I mentioned the fact that it's an academic blueprint, a plan of action within the context of a subject matter that you are interested in. And so today, I will be talking about a research topic and uh, the abstract of a research proposal. Now, the research topic um, is your first point of action. It is actually the starting point of any research endeavor. It's an opportunity for you to demonstrate that you have clearly identified a problem and you can present the problem in a written form. Now, what this means is that when you look at a research topic, it must be articulate, it must be succinct, it must be uh, self-explanatory. And a research topic must have a central issue that it wants to address. And what all of this entails is simply based on the fact that from your research topic, you should be able to generate technically um, developed keywords that you will use in your searching. And, and I'll, I'll, do, I'll come to that um, in, in a while. But talking about a research topic also, I just want you to know and remember that a research topic is a problem. And it is a problem that is a fraction of a bigger problem. In other words, it means that a research topic is a problem, but it is not a problem in isolation. So what this implies is that when you want to come up with your research topic, you have to ask yourself some very important questions. For instance, you want to ask yourself, where am I going to get the data from for this topic? So the source of your data will probably justify to a large extent if your research is visible or not. And by extension, what this also means is that you want to go for low hanging fruit. You want to be able to identify a gap within the space of a research problem that is here to be solved in a way that you want to solve it. So a research topic must be self-explanatory, it must be succinct, it must be clear, it must be simple, it must not be ambiguous, because that is where your starting point is. It is an opportunity for you to present a problem in a way that is easily understandable. So having talked about a research topic, I want to quickly talk about the abstract of a research proposal. The interesting thing about the abstract of a research proposal, unlike what you have as abstract in your thesis or your manuscript, for a research proposal, the abstract is simply about three things. What will be done, how it will be done, and the anticipated outcome. So first and foremost, the abstract should come with a tone of this is what will be done number one and it should be followed carefully by this is how it will be done and number three it should clearly state okay this is what we expect when we have done all of these things and that's what the abstract of a research proposal simply means so now if you look carefully at the abstract of a thesis on the other hand it's simply a function of what was done how it was done and the overall outcome so when you put this side by side, you understand that your tone, your choice of words, your tenses, for instance, will dictate how the abstract of a research proposal must be uh, developed or written out. Now, if I may uh, quickly remind you that when we look at a research proposal in its entirety and we try to extrapolate the topic or the abstract, the key issue here is that for a research topic, you are asking yourself or you must be able to identify the central issue upon which the research activity is going to be hanging on. So a research topic, for instance, simply means that you have 
shown that literature is available on the area that you want to carry out your research on and that the literature is not sufficient or has not fully addressed the area that you want to focus on. So you are not just generating a topic because of the beauty of it or because of the gorgeousness of it or because of the niceness of it, if I may put it that way. You are generating the topic because you have carefully engaged with literature. So engaging with literature is an avenue for which you can successfully develop or conceptualize your research topic. Because if the problem is already identified, say maybe from personal or professional experience, you want to root it in scholarly written resources. And that's the whole essence of it. Because again, like I said in my research proposal uh, video, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You simply want to show that this is what I have come up with and I didn't just come up with it because I felt like this is how it should look like. You came up with it because you have carefully looked through literature, come through literature and identify the area where your research topic fits in. So number one, think of your research topic as the starting point of your research activity. Number two, think of your research topic as having a central issue that it wants to address. Number three, think of your research topic as a stand-alone self-explanatory entity. Number four, think of your research topic and think of it side by side, where will I get the data from? And when you look at all of this all lumped together, it gives you an opportunity to know exactly what your research topic is all about and what it will be doing. And the same thing extended to your research abstract, proposal abstract. Now, in the case of your research proposal abstract, in, in some instances, it's just a question of 300 words, 400 words maximum, because you must just be able to condense everything together and show that, okay, this is where I'm going to, but this is where I'm starting from, All right? So remember, again, to subscribe to this channel, to like this video, and to follow me on my Twitter handle. I'm going to be coming up in the next subsequent uh, video to tell you about the problem statement, the research objectives, and the research questions. Until then, please stay safe out there. I'll see you soon.